before we go into worship, I just want to share the consistent theme which you heard tonight is on pride, isn't it? And humility. And I was saturated my mind on these verses that we can put up from James this week and realize that actually God can resist the proud marriage. We, we often think God resists me, God resists you, but He also will resist the proud marriage. He won't, he won't bring that healing aspect of His grace. God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Look at these different translations. God is opposed to the proud and haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble who turn away from self-righteousness. God gives strength to those who are humble, but sets Himself against the proud and the haughty. So when it comes to marriage, that's why this topic of pride is so important and humility because it actually positions yourself to receive the favor of God upon your life, upon your prayers being answered, upon your marriage, or it'll actually, God can resist you and me when we're proud. We don't have God's aid, God's help, His, His covering over our marriage. Pride is both an attitude and a type of conduct. It includes the ideas of arrogance and also acting it out. It's cynical insensitivity to the needs of others and presumptuous. I'm, I'm presuming these things and it's about me and that's why it has to be repent, repented of continually because it continually comes in. That's the filling of the Holy Spirit counteracts what pride is doing in our heart. And the one thing that happens with the hard heart is it starts out not too hard, but then it gets harder and harder. It's like I, I give the men sometimes when I speak on this topic of the image of concrete. Have you ever poured concrete and, you know, 10 minutes in, it's 15 minutes in, 20, it's, it's hard, but it's not, you know, it's not that hard yet. You can still write your initials in it. And, and as it gets, the, the hours go by, it becomes very hard. And that's the danger, Christian, in our own hearts. If we don't deal with it, when God is convicting it, because you're convicted like I am. And when we ignore that conviction, that's where that hardness begins to continue to set in. A haughty look, it's, it's spiritual pride, and it's closing the ears. And they, the Bible would use the, the uh, imagery of, of our look, a haughty look. You ever just look at your spouse a certain way or, or look at people a certain way and uh, pride by closing the ears. They would, they would close their ears. Their hearts would grow hard. Uh, and often, here's the biggie. Often, it's off, it's pride in one or the other spouse that leads to divorce. You, you, I don't, I don't see too much divorce, um, in those I know at, at this church that where humility was ruling and reigning in the hearts of both spouses. Now, sometimes I understand there's, there's grounds for a divorce. I believe God gives that, that out sometimes if that person is consistently unfaithful and just mocking the marriage covenant and you've tried all you can do. And, and, and so I'm not, I'm not downplaying that. I'm not d downplaying. We've had to counsel people through very abusive uh, relationships uh, and that's not healthy. So I do understand that. But most of the time, and even in those cases, it would be the pride of the man that was doing that. And then the, also the, the pride in the woman, the, the shoe f fits on the other foot as well sometimes, where the woman is the prideful one, and it, it, it's the man trying and submitting to what God wants. And so it's always pride at, the, at, the, at really the, the center of these issues. Crosswalk, a good website, said a hard heart is where, when this comes in, begins to come in bitterness and resentment. Anyone been there? Oh, boy, we can live there in our marriage because we're not taking our, our thoughts captive. And if we don't, we become more bitter, more resentful. And then also isolation. We isolate ourselves from God and others. We refuse to forgive. That really gets the heart hard because I, I know I'm supposed to do something, but I refuse it. So because I'm refusing what I know to be true in God's word, I'm actually resisting God. God resists me because now I'm proud and prideful, and I'm not going to forgive. How dare they? I, I, I'm, I'm going to show them, and God begins to resist us in this area. Matthew 19.8, He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, 
allowed divorce, but from the beginning it was not so. Mark, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Proverbs, blessed is the man who always fears, but one who hardens his heart falls into trouble. And you can look in Hebrews, three times in the book of Hebrews, when you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. It's a call for us to repent of this hard, hardness. And I thought, you know, I want to throw this out there. Well, Shane, how do I know? I mean, how do I know if I'm struggling with pride or if this is an area uh, that I need to, to really take to the Lord? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Does what we said tonight upset you or break you? Are you sitting there with excuses and upset? And yeah, but they don't know what the situation I'm in. Yeah, but, but, but are you offended? Are you upset at what we've talked about tonight? Guess what? Ding, 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 ding. You win the prize. There's some, there's some pride going on in there. And so we, do we, do we, allow God to break us or do we continue to build up our our hardness are you making excuses in your mind or are you focusing on changes that you need to make I'm focusing on changes especially when Tim uh, talked about building up his wife you know I don't do that enough I was and you have to fight against how you were raised again I was raised from a tough tough dad and you don't cry, you don't show emotion, you don't tell people they, they, they know you love them. You don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell people a good job. You should just do a good job. And so, you know, I've got to, I've got to really go out of my way to encourage in, in, in that area. And I haven't been in, in that flower, in the, the, the rose, in, I don't think it's rose, but it's, I'm not a flower guy, whatever that's called. But the wilting, how many of us can relate to that? That's what happens. The flower's wilting, it's dying. What's the difference? What's the difference between those two flowers? Water. Washing of the water with God's Word on our spouses. Bringing God's Word into their lives, into our hearts, that waters the plant. That waters that area. That waters their heart. So we're either speaking life. That was a great analogy that the, even the pebble will hurt the butterfly. Are we speaking life into our marriages? So I'm just going to close with this thought. Look in the face of your kids, maybe this week or your grandkids, and think about the end of your life. Do you really want pride to be your downfall? And maybe I see this more than others. I know Pastor Abram does as this, does this well, but when um, over the years, you know, doing hospital visits or visiting people in hospice, I leave there just often, many times frustrated, sad, just can't believe that even at, there at the end of the life, holding on to that pride, hold, they're going to die with that pride. They've ruined their marriage. Their kids don't want to talk to them anymore. And yet, they die. They take it to their grave. And I don't want to be that person. I don't know about you. But I don't want pride to be my downfall. I don't want to get to the year, end of my life and, and regret that I didn't humble myself more. Look your children in the eyes as well. Did you know that the greatest gift you can give your kids is humility? The greatest gift. I'm, I'm convinced, you know, we're going to have three teenagers here shortly and two more on their way to be teenagers. And I used to think before we had kids that it was living as close to the Bible as I could. And don't get me wrong, that's our goal. We, we should do that. But with that often can come a spiritual pride. Haughty look. And we use the Scriptures to beat them up or beat others up or impress. But when your kids can see humility, humil that you own it, that you repent, that you're the first to say, hey, that was wrong. Look at the Bible. And I didn't act that way. It says, anger worketh not the righteousness of man. And I let that really get, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, with the grace of God, would you pray for me? I'm going to work on this area. And the humility, they, it just, they, it comes, they, the, the children come alive, the marriage comes alive because you're not resisting. God's not resisting you. He gives grace to the humble. The grace permeates your house. It will permeate your marriage. Pride is destructive. It is 
deadly. It is damning. What keeps people from receiving Jesus? Pride. So the battlefield of marriage is littered with the corpses of pride. If indifference has slain its thousands, pride has slain its ten thousands. And we have to root it out just like cancer. And one thing I, I do appreciate about Westside Christian Fellowship is when you come here, you don't have to hide or fake it. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? We, we don't want people to walk in and, and think they've, they've got it all together and they talk the language. Oh, brother, I'm doing great. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And their wife says, who's this guy? But you can be real here. You don't have to fake it, right? We struggle with things and we're honest about things. And that's why God is moving in amazing ways is because there's honesty and transparency. God actually was gracious to the humble. He was, even those caught in sexual sin or those caught in, in sin, He was gracious to those. It, gracious to those. It was the hypocrite, the hypocrite that really received the strongest rebukes from our Lord. So again, God resists the proud, fights against, holds back. Is there something God might be holding back in your life? Maybe deliverance? Maybe healing? Maybe being set free? Maybe restoration? I mean, you name it. God can resist the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. So the worship team is going to come up. And I'm going to close in prayer right now with a very specific prayer. God, I pray that You would show us what true biblical humility looks like. God, what does it really mean to humble ourselves before our spouse, before others, to put them first? Lord, and I pray that the hardness of the hearts that are in this room, Lord, even including mine, if hardness has, has crept in, that we would leave it here tonight. We would bring it to this altar. We would pray that our marriages are strengthened and that the enemy will not win. What he is trying to divide, you would unite. Where he's sowing discord among us, you would begin to bring unity and harmony, all because of the wonderful word humility and submission to you and not resisting us, but actually showering us with your grace and we pray this in jesus precious name amen amen this is the air i breathe this is the air i breathe your holy This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me.
You're all I 
Fulfill the deepest longing, Jesus.